Hallelujah. Are we here or we have still gone home? Next one. You must have a mega church because a mega church has a larger and greater income that can be used for the work of God. Eh? How many of you have ideas that you have not implemented because of lack of money? Can I see? Yes, so many people. Eh? Your building project, you started in 2006. <laughs> it was last two weeks that you cast quarter of the, of the slab. And you are waiting to gather money from now to December. So that God will in February next year, you cast. When are you going to finish this project? <laughs> Eh? Do you understand it? Yeah. When the church is large, when the church is large, all right, it's not always, sometimes you can have a large church, but in an area that really the people don't have money, no matter what you do, they don't have money. But generally speaking, a large church would have a bigger income. Generally speaking. And therefore, it allows you to fulfill the different things that God has called you to do. How frustrating it can be that there's something in your heart you can't do it. You really want to do it, but you can't do it. And for years, you are not able to do it because the income is small. Because the church is small. Church is small, the income is small. Yeah. Now, if you take our church here, now this area is peri urban. It's, it's really not developed. You can see it. I mean, you saw the roads, those of you who came. Yeah. Okay, one pastor saw me at this point that he's going to, you know, he's organizing a grader to grade the, the rough patch so that people can come to the conference more easily. Oh. Even when I got to that place yesterday when I was coming, I said, when, when, when I come, I'll apologize to the people. For letting them drive through such a bad road. My daughter was asking that, so daddy, when you get to a place that it, do you still go on the accelerator or what? I said, no. The car just moves on its own. <laughs> we have ordinary people. Petty traders, squatters, you know, this type of people. And then we also have people that God has blessed. So the income comes from both of them. Yeah. When I'm calling for offering, I take my I speak, I quote scriptures, I encourage, and still there are a lot of people, it doesn't move them at all. My encouragement doesn't move them at all. They just sit like that. And look at me. We have nothing to give. <laughs> but the income of the church is good. Why? Because when you add the little and nothing with a bit which is also good and you mix it together, you come out doing well. So, because there are a lot of people in the church, when we put it all together, 
small, 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 big, you know, average, little, that. No, it works out well. Yeah. There are many things that God is going to ask you to do. And you know, as the Lord takes you along the ministry, he will give you different things to do. Now do this. Now set up an orphanage. Now start a school. Now start a hospital. Now start crusades. Now do this. Each of them will come with money. And if, if you don't have money, you can't do it. That is why God is saying, okay, I want you to rise up and have a strong vision for your ministry to become larger and bigger. And don't encourage yourself and be happy to say what we have is okay. It's cozy. Yeah. I had the privilege of going to dedicate his new building that he's building. Do you see? When you see the size of the building and the number of people who are in his current church, I realize that he's believing God for church growth. Yes. When I, when I, when I, I went there, that's what I saw. Because if you take the, the number of people that he has now and send them on that platform, they will just be somewhere in the middle. But he's looking at the future. Yes. I see God giving you a lot of people. I see a lot of people coming to your church. Oh, your ministry is growing. It's advancing. You are moving to newer levels. You are entering and you are becoming a mega church pastor. Though thy beginning was small, thy latter end, it has been prophesied, shall greatly enlarge. Hallelujah. Amen. And God is going to give you a lot of money to do all the things that he has called you to do. Can you receive that? Yes. Only don't forget when he gives you the money to use it for something else. Yeah. A lot of money. Oh, yeah. Are you happy about that? Oh, yes. Having more people also means having a higher church income. If a church has a good pastor, the money of the church will be used for the right things. Unfortunately, some pastors are more like vampires. They suck the blood of the church rather than pour their lives into the ministry. Eh? Some of you, instead of eating for strength at this level of your ministry, eh? you are eating for pleasure. The Bible says that woe unto you. When your princes eat for pleasure and not for strength. The car that you have bought is a total drain on your ministry. So you don't need this car that you are driving now. After this conference, go and change it. Sell it, pay back the loan that you have taken in the name of the church, and walk or buy a very small car, a quadrao coin, 1.2 liters or something. No, but the car that you have bought. This always people are shouting, one gallon, pastor, and they, they know you also, pastor, one gallon. You can't buy petrol for the car, but you want to drive drive this car to feel big that you are called a man of God.
Eh? No, take it easy. Build a church. Eh? You build a church. A time will come. All these things, they will be easy. They will be very easy for you. Very, very easy. Aim to build a large church. A successful church. Build a church building first. So that when it rains, your people will be secured. You see, your church will have been bigger than this, but where you have been meeting, when it rains, people can't stay there. Even you, you say in your announcement that uh, next week we'll see how the weather is. <laughs> eh? So when it rains, okay, it's... Uh, when it rains, we'll see. Maybe we have the house on, on Facebook. Because nobody can stay there. And you have been in the place for many years. I remember one time in one of our churches, we saw somebody selling their property in the newspapers. Actually, somebody hinted us, drew our attention. Oh, he has seen that. Yeah. So, it was true. We went to see the man. You know, an old man who was um, not well, needed money to treat himself and all that, and was selling his property. So went to negotiations with him and bought. Then when we bought, we realized that another church was meeting there. Apparently he had given, you know, he used to be a member of the church, so he had given the place to them to hold services. And they have been in it for 10 years without paying anything. Yeah. Now they were angry with us that we have bought a church building. Now we said, look, the man is public. There's a newspaper. Yeah. Now this is a real story. They were angry. They fought us. When we tried to go into the distance, they tried to beat us. You know, it went on and on. And then, suddenly, the members of the church, some of the key ones rose up against their pastor. Yes. And they began to ask the, their pastor, that, where is our church building? Not knowing that for the last 10 years, he has been raising up money to build a church in another part of the town. 10 years. They said, where is the church building? If you have used the money to build, you will not have been this. Let they, they, they told us, come for your church. That's how we're able to possess the church. Yes. So what I'm saying is that God will give you money, but will you use it for the purposes for which he gives you the money? Huh? Huh? Yeah. Unfortunately, some pastors are more like vampires. They suck the blood of the church rather than their lives. Rather than to pour their lives into the ministry. A higher income means many more spiritual goals are achievable. Money is not an evil thing. Money is neutral. It is the love of money that is evil. Money is a weapon in the hand of man. The Bible says money answered all things. If a good man has money, he will use it to good, do good things. A good minister will use the income of a mega church to build the church and promote the gospel. And when God sees that you are that type of pastor, he will give you plenty money. And when he knows that you are not that type of pastor, he will not. He will not. Yeah. Can God trust you with a lot of money? Can God trust you with a lot of money? Can God trust you with a lot of money? In our church, the bishops are trusted with the money. Yeah, each bishop is trusted with the money. 
Use the money. Huh? Eh? Yeah. So use the money. Pay yourself. Pay your taxes. Who should come and pay your taxes for you? Pay your taxes. It's your responsibility. I'm not a bishop. I'm not an overseer. I'm not a governor. I'm not a manager of the church. I'm not a custodian of the church. Build. Yes. And let's see how faithful you will be. Amen? Amen. Wow. Number 16. You must have a mega church because special ministries which take care of special needs will develop within a mega church. Yeah. So as you go on now, you have to set up an orphanage. Now you have to set up a school. Now you have to look at poor people. Is that not so? Eh? Yeah. If, if you take someone like our ministry, you see, we are quiet. You see, my pastor, Bishop Dark, is a quiet person. It is when you go close, you'll be surprised the things that the man does. For years, all the beggars in Accra, we have registered them for years, registered them every month. Okay, they eat a good meal, have a church service, and then they are giving their monthly money stipend. Yeah, all the beggars you see them are the are the uh, the traffic lights, you know, and all that. You will never hear him talk about it. Yeah. Recently we had a little celebration for his sister birthday. They came. They came. Some of them in their crutches and all that. Sharing their experience. It's part of the gospel. It's part of the gospel. Matthew 25 from verse 30 says, Jesus said, look, I was a stranger. did not take me. I was hungry. You didn't give me. I was in prison. You didn't visit me. I was in hospital. You didn't come there. I was naked. You didn't clothe me. Yeah. So it's part. It's part. We have a lot of people who have free medical care. During the crusades, they do, you know, free medical care. Hundreds of people. Yeah. He has led us to supply blind students with brain machines. Test books for them. We just build a huge hospital. Will you be somewhere there? Saint Gamaliel's to provide prosthetic legs for people who don't have free of charge. Yeah, you will never hear him talk about things like that. You see, you should be afraid of a man of God at like that too. Yeah. You should be afraid of such a person. Who is working hard and striving hard to, to, to please God and to walk in the will of God. You should, you should be afraid of him and watch your mouth. When you open your mouth, what you say. Hmm? But all these things require a lot of money. Amen. Pastor Kinsey, please come. Right here. It requires a lot of money. Yeah. A lot of money. But maybe that's what God wants you to do. But without, without money, you can't do it. How many of you have seen the blessings of a mega church? That's why I've spent the whole of today talking about it. 
God is giving you a vision. Changing. Many pastors have very little you know, vision when it comes to the church. It looks as if that footballers want to achieve more. Bankers want to achieve more. Everybody want to break a record. At least want to break the 100 meter record. Pastors, it seems as if most of us don't want to do anything great for the Lord. Huh? Yeah. A pastor was telling me that he went to invite, you know, somebody for this conference. Yeah. When he went, the person was having a weekday service. There was only one person there. So he told the pastor that I think this conference will help you. Because it's a church group conference. Do you know what the pastor said? How many of you want to know what the pastor Look, I'm going to join my father in Kenya to tell the Kenyans Eh? You are not interested. We are interested. We are interested. Pastor William, do you know what the pastor told? No, Bishop. The pastor said, Oh. (laughs) I've never heard anything like that. He said that God has shared the people. And I decided to give some people 1,000, some people 500, and some people to, you know, one. So. If God has given him one, okay, he's okay, cry. He doesn't need any church go conference. I mean, yeah. Do understand it? And that what he must do is just to make sure that he takes care of this, you know, one man. But what about the scripture where Jesus said, whosoever is faithful with least is faithful in much. What about when Jesus said, well done, thou and faithful servant, thou hast been faithful with little. Eh? Come down. Come now and receive more. What about the scripture that says that though that beginning was small, yet the latter end shall greatly enlarge. So what should we be saying? Do you think that God would force 200 people into this person's ministry? No. It will never happen. Yeah. The Bible said that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Yeah. What a shock. Huh? So God has shared the members. Based on what he has said, I'm going to tell God that look, what he has given me, I don't think that that is what I want. He should add more. How many of you are going to ask God to add more? More. And if God makes a mistake of asking me how much more? I will mention a figure beer. <laughs> Nothing less than one billion people. Amen. How, how many of you ask for millions? Me, if God makes a mistake, so okay. Starting from next Sunday, get your church ready. I am bringing you the number of people that you want. You open your mouth wide and the Lord say, I will feel it. I see the Lord filling your ministry with more people, more salvation, more people are being saved through your ministry. More people are being uh, rescued from the crutches of hell. Hallelujah. More people are escaping hell because of your church, because of your ministry. Children are giving their lives to Christ. Young people are being saved. Yeah. Yeah. 
the police people in our area here have even taken note of our church. Mm. Yeah. We're telling one of my bishops, we have not seen a church that has such a great effect on the young people. Mm. They are changing the lives of the young people. No, because it affects their work. If the young people are, are stopping, you know, crime, smoking, weed, stealing, arm robbery, and all that, it makes their work easy. They've seen it, cry. They've seen it. Amen? Amen. Are you here? You've gone home. We are here. Huh? We are here. Number 17. There's a 17th reason why you must have a mega church. How many of you realize that you are not coming back next year to this place the same? You must have a mega church because it shows that you have made full proof of your ministry. I spoke about that in the morning. Is that also? Yes. Eh? Yes. And I introduced that book to you. Yes. Amen. Yes. Number 18. You must have a mega church because in a mega church, there are more beloveds, yes. potential marriage partners in a large church. In 2021, that lady who sings nice in your church left your church. In 2022, two lady ashes who usher people nice and also give good offerings. And every time you finish, they can say, Oh, Pastor, in fact, we're blessed. You know, also let. Yeah. The first one who left was 42 years. They have been in your church for 11 years looking for a husband. <laughs> These two, also 30, 36. 36, 34. One has been there for nine years. Finished school, university. Be there. Always you have prophesied. You have prophesied. Every time you have tried, you say, come. Next year by this time. Yeah. Well, look, they have looked at, and I mean, the brothers in the church, number one, they are not many. Do you see? Number two, I mean, <laughs> about five of them, so, uh, 71, yes, <laughs> divorced, and then the other brothers also 17, 15 GHS, struggle with GHS exams. Mercy. Wow. No, so when they look inside the right, no, 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 and the church has remained 22 for the past five years. The same people. Those who squeeze their face, always squeeze their face. Those who smile, always smile. There's this one brother, the tooth is like this. So they are tired. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they are living. But in a mega church, yeah. huh, you want 58 years, you will get. No, you get. 22, you get. Your brothers, they want sisters who are Kodaki color. They are there. Mega church. No, they are, they are there. Yes. Slim, slim, very slim sister. That's what uh, some brothers want. Very slim. Yeah, that's what they like. And they are there. So the brothers also want 
Oboshi type of with you know to whom for like when I was younger yeah when I was younger a young man I was growing up so I had an idea of a wife yes now I wanted a wife with two very large breasts yes no, I mean, that was also my, my, my expectation. Yeah. And my reason was that in the night, because I realized that life, there are too many problems. So in the night, when we sleep, I'll put my head in between her breasts, and then she'll use the two large breasts to cover my head and cover all my problems. Church, you get crap. I don't know why the Lord didn't, I mean, answer my prayer because my wife, you know, didn't have that. Yes. Yeah. Recently, you know, I was chatting of one of my pastors. I said, Charlie, you are 31 years or whatever. So, how? So, Bishop, I have a problem. That's why I can't choose a beloved. He said, he said, have a certain type, something I'm looking for. Yes. Do you see? He said, when I was not born again, I like ladies who had large bums. Yes. Then he said, even though now I'm born again, I know that I can't follow only that. I must also follow spiritual. Yet that area I still cannot. <laughs> so that is his difficulty. So I told him, no problem. I was out of the country then when he said, I said, no problem. When I come, let's sit down. Yeah. I have my Lady reverends who are in charge of the marriage counselor and all that. Okay, I will send you to them. So they should look through. By the grace of God, we have a mega oh, church. Yes. They should look through. Okay. And point out. <laughs> yes. And, and, and I know he will get. He will get crowd. In a mega church, oh, yes. sisters are looking for a very tall brother. They will get. How many of you they will get in a mega church? And some of the ladies also who are bullies, they want a short brother. So when the brother at the end of the month gets the salary, he says, Bring it now. Otherwise, it will. No, but that one too is in the church. Whatever you want, white, black, yellow, green, it's all there because the church is a mega church. But when the church, the whole church after seven years, this is 43. This limit, the limitation is too much. It's too much. It's too much. And Pastor Sissy, these are all part of the prayers we should be praying. No, you should pray. I pray, I pray, I say, Lord, send husbands to your daughters. Send wives to your son. I pray. No, I ask that. I say, let there be weddings. Let there be marriages. Let the people, let them choose themselves. Oh, Lord. It's very important, too. It's very important. If you don't do that, you'll be there. Somebody... Who is helping you in the ministry in a certain way? Yes, because so, I mean, it's off. They're gone. 
Amen. Amen. Are you clapping hands for the Lord? For a mega church. Number 19. You must have a mega church because in the mega church, more marriages and more weddings take place. When, when was the last time a wedding took place in your church? By the way, pastors, you must be gazetted and where your church it must also be registered for marriages. Otherwise, you don't qualify to marry anybody. By the laws of the country. Yeah. More weddings. Do you understand it? It brings joy. Every time I stand in the pulpit and announce a wedding, I can see excitement. Shoutings. Screamings. Yes. Huh? Yes. When there are no weddings, brothers are just their sisters looking to their faces. Okay? And one of your duties as a pastor, as a, as a shepherd, is to help the sheep. Because sometimes the sheep are blind. They can't see the beautiful thing or the nice thing that is there. Or the nice thing. No, they can't see. So you have to help them. Yeah. A pastor is a shepherd. You must be involved. A real shepherd. What is the sign of a real shepherd? Eh? Any pastor that, I mean, you smell nicely only of your your body spray or whatever, you are not a good pastor. A real pastor smells of the sheep. Thank you. Because you are right in the middle of the sheep, trying to move the ticks and the insects, you know, and the demons that are trying to kill them, trying to rub their skins with oil. Oh. And in the process, their scent and their problems and their difficulties, they also rub on you. That is what makes you a real shepherd. You are there in their issues. Yeah. How come that your office smells very nice all the time throughout Sunday? Because your sheep don't come to you. You are a big executive in that office. You should come and see my office on Sundays. Coming in and out, and my people know everybody. My helpers, they know. No, there, there's, there's not. Everybody is coming. Poor, old, young, rich, educated, educated. Everybody must be allowed to come. And there's a mixture of body odor and issues. Yes. Yes. Fragrances are different. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. See, that's why you don't have sheep. You look too polished. You are too an executive of a pastor. The greatest pastor that ever lived was Jesus Christ. He called himself the Good Shepherd. He was amongst the people. He was right there amongst the people. Yeah. And when one of his sheep, you know, died, he was there. He, he went there. Yeah. And Martha said that if you have not been here, if you have been here, my brother would not have died. Yeah. It broke his heart. It broke his heart and he wept. How can that? You don't weep. You're always very happy, strong. Your face is very straight. You are not concerned about the issue because you don't even know. You are too high there. After preaching, your bodyguard shield you. They stand in front of your office. Nobody, only the rich people enter. The people with envelopes that are breaking to you. Yeah. I've been a Christian for many years. Serving the Lord and working in the church. How come 
that only the rich and nice people. That I'm asking that. That's why your office, the fact that your office smells so nice all the time on Sunday. How come? How many of you want your church to grow? Okay. Who are you ministering to? Yeah. It's one of the things that I talk about in my new book. What did Jesus say? He said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. And in Matthew 11, when John the Baptist sent people to him and to ask, are you the one that we are expecting or we should look for somebody else? He said, go and tell John the things that you see. The lame walk, the blind see. Eh? The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. Eh? The dead are raised. Women receive back their dead. And he said, and the gospel, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And the poor, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. It's a sign. Jesus was like, it's a sign that I'm the anointed one. Then he said, how hardly will a rich man enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to enter into the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And you see pastors, your whole focus is on rich people and important people. You are trying to get the MC in your church, the member of parliament, a certain businessman who has a private jet. They are the people that you are praying, visiting 20 times every month, trying to get them to end. The poor people that Jesus said that the gospel is for them. You are neglecting them. That is why you don't have sheep in your church. Come here Sunday morning. We bring 90% of the people in buses. They have no money to come to church. If we don't sell the buses, they can't come. Where are we are even bringing them from? They have to take, you know, hopping from one trotter to about three or four times before they can. They can't pay. They can't pay. 20 cities coming in, 20 cities, or uh, 30 cities coming in and out. They can't. Yeah. Come, you see plenty. When you call for the offering, they are not going anywhere. Yes? Why well, your ass is coming because you are not eating? See your offering. But they will fill the church. Yes. They will listen to the word of God. Yes. When you call for evangelists, they will come. When you say prayer, oh. they will come. Out to Jesus, they will come. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I have seen God putting his glory mm. on these same people yeah. and changing them mm. into the powerful yeah. vessels over time. Yeah. The poor people, the kobolos, eh? the memories who followed David mm. into the cave of Aduram mm. where the people that a few years down the line were described as David's mighty man. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We have several young people, you know, who are invested that we, we have to help them, you know, and all that. I remember one particular uh, lady. Do you see? I don't want to mention the profession. She's becoming some, somebody very powerful. Wow. Yeah. When she got admission, it's that like how to enter and where to stay. The mother came to see me. I said, oh, you know, who will help. Yeah, she's about to finish. I, I'm about to receive a very powerful person in my church. And I'm praying that she'll get a beloved to and stay. So that after I've suffered, so that some, someone said, Bishop, uh, I saw her. Saw her where?